Okay, so now uh, for a pointed partition, I'm going to give a name to the partition, call, call it P, and a given partition P as a parameter that I will denote delta P. And this parameter is simply the maximum width of the subintervals. Right? So I look at the widths of subintervals, which are this delta XK, and I take the largest of them. This uh, approximating sum that we just have defined, I'm going to call that the Riemann sum for the function f and for the partition p, where p is a pointed partition of the interval a, b. And I'm going to denote that r of f and p. And the idea here is that uh, if we can make sense of this array under the graph of the function, with this type of process of approximating with areas of rectangles that we build on partitions and increasing the number of um, sub-intervals in the partition, then um, the area should be the limit of these Riemann sums, limit when the parameter of the partition goes to zero. Now this is a, a limit that is of a somewhat different nature from the limits that we have uh, looked at so far because this is for any possible pointed partition of the um, interval AB and we look at this limit over the parameter of the partition going to zero but when we range over every possible pointed partition. If this works for any possible pointed partition as the parameter goes to zero then of course uh, it is natural to define the area under the graph as this particular limit. So that leads us to the formal definition. So this is just a setting. We have defined our Riemann sums for a pointed partition. And if I have a positive function or non-negative function on the interval AB, then the area under the graph of F over that interval AB, by definition, is the limit of the Riemann sums over any pointed partition as the parameter of the partitions goes to zero provided that the limit exists. Now recall that this parameter here is simply the maximum width of subintervals, in other words the maximum of the delta x case. Now what does that really mean, the limit of these Riemann sums? That means that the Riemann sums can be made as close to A as we want by taking the uh, parameter sufficiently close to zero. When I say by taking is as long as the parameter is sufficiently close to zero for any pointed partition I should be within the prescribed distance. So formally if we go with in the spirit of the epsilon delta definition of limits that we have seen before that means that for any prescribed distance between my Riemann sum and the limit this prescribed distance, let's call it epsilon. So I want that uh, my Riemann sum for a given partition is within epsilon of the limit. I can achieve that for any pointed partition as long as the parameter of the partition is sufficiently small. In other words, for any epsilon there is delta such that when the parameter of the partition is less than delta then the distance between the Riemann sum for the function f and that particular partition and the distance between that Riemann sum and the limit is less than epsilon. Now, we have defined that for a, a non-negative function because we are talking about the area under the graph of the function. But formally, this process of taking the limits of the Riemann sum does not really depend on whether the function is non-negative on the interval or not. So we're going to more generally, with the same setting, define the definite integral of the function f on an interval a, b as the limit of the Riemann sums of the function f for pointed partitions, limit as the parameter of the pointed partitions goes to zero. So here the limit is in the same sense as before. In other words, for every epsilon there is delta such that for any pointed partition of the interval a, b, if the parameter is less than delta, then the distance between the Riemann sum and the limit is less than epsilon. And 
when the limit exists, we are going to use a more convenient notation for this integral. This sort of elongated S is called an integral sign. You see that in the Riemann sum we have a sigma for the sum, and when we go to the limit, this sigma becomes an el elongated S, but that still stands for an idea of summing, but we pass from a, a discrete sum to a, some sort of continuous sum. The function under the integral sign is called the integrand, so this is the function that we integrate. Uh, at the bottom of the integral sign we have the lower bound of integration, at the top we have the upper bound of integration. Now of course uh, all these definitions are provided that the limit exists, so we want to have uh, some idea of when this limit exists, when the integral makes sense. And we could get uh, more general conditions, but something that is going to be good enough for us, and we're not going to prove it, but admit that this is the case. If the function is continuous on the closed interval, then its integral on that interval exists. So, going back to uh, our problem from the beginning, this is really what we were interested in. If I have a positive continuous function on the closed interval, I want to talk about the area under the graph of the function, and what the theorem says, um, among other things, is that um, in that case the area makes sense, exists, and to define it uh, we have to do this uh, approximating process and in the limit what we obtain is a number which is denoted by this integral from a to b of f of x dx. In other words, if, if the function is non-negative and continuous on the interval a, b, then the integral from a to b of the function f is the area under the graph of the function over the interval a, b. Now that we have a formal definition that is somewhat cumbersome, um, turn to the next video to see some examples and basic properties.